This episode, we're going to talk about deploying Action Cable to production, and we're going to be using Passenger. And if you don't have a server already, um, you can follow the Go Rails guide for deploying Ruby on Rails on Ubuntu. So I actually have a VirtualBox server set up here, and I just followed this guide, and we're going to skip the Capistrano setup, um, but we're going to just clone a Git repository into this server. And we're going to test it locally as if it were a real production server on DigitalOcean or AWS or something. So uh, Passenger 5.0.24 is the version, like the minimum version you're going to want to use with Action Cable. I tried using Passenger 5 um, a couple weeks back and we ran into some issues with WebSockets and Action Cable. And that's all getting improved and fixed. And Fusion is working very hard to make sure that this is all up to date and working well with the latest Rails versions. And speaking of the latest Rails version, Rails 5 Beta 2 came out, which removes the celluloid Redis and event machine uh, dependencies, which is really great. So this is going to be a lot lighter weight of an installation by default. And you won't even need Redis by default because if you're using Postgres, you can take advantage of the built-in PubSub functionality um, but if you are using Redis for something like Sidekick uh, or Rescue or whatever, um, you'll be able to continue to use Redis for that, but you don't have to. So that's pretty nifty and will allow you to do easier like setups and uh, everything with Action Cable. So Passenger 5, like 22 or whatever I tested originally, um, had some bugs that have gotten fixed in 5.0.24. So this is going to be what we're using uh, going forward. So if you've already deployed a server using this tutorial or you're already running Passenger, uh, you're basically wanting to go through and just update that package. So if you installed this on Ubuntu with the aptitude repository, you can just simply say apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade. And this will go download a list of all the latest software and it will look to upgrade um, any of the software you have on your Ubuntu server. So really that's just going to say, okay, um, there's a new version of Passenger, let's update that. There may be a new version of like Nginx or MySQL or Postgres. So we'll go ahead and upgrade those things. Uh, mainly you're just looking to make sure that you get the latest version of uh, Passenger. And I've already done that, but this server is running following that tutorial. So everything is up to date as if you were to do that uh, completely fresh. Now. Uh, there's the GitHub Rails Action Cable Examples um, repository that we're going to use here. And uh, basically yesterday, DHH merged a pull request and that pulled in Rails 5 Beta 2. So this is no longer using Rails for master um, and we'll have the Action Cable dependency in it and everything. So this is going to... Uh, be basically what you would want to use to run in production. So it removed the action cable process logging, which got changed in that and basically updated this to the basics that you're going to need. So let's clone this into our server and then deploy this Rails app as a production Rails app running on Passenger. And we'll do that in our virtual machine. So on our server, we're gonna need to have that Rails application. Now, normally you would use Capistrano to deploy that to your server. We're gonna cheat and just get clone uh, directly that repository. So we're gonna say github.com slash rails slash action cable examples. And normally if you're using Capistrano, you would have like the directory here, but if you go into the directory, you would see like a current directory which would be where the real application sits. Um, we're skipping that because of not using uh, Capistrano, but you'll just change the folder names when you set up your Nginx stuff, um, and that will be the only difference to do this in production. So um, we have our application here, and there's a couple things that we want to make sure that we uh, set. So for one, um, if we open up app assets JavaScripts, and we go into the channels directory and go into index.coffee, this app.cable is going to create a JavaScript WebSocket consumer. So it's going to be the thing that connects to the WebSocket server side. Now we actually want to mount this and in the slash cable route. And the reason why we're going to do this is because it's going to simplify it. And you'll be using WebSockets through your Rails app, basically. 
without having to use a separate port on your machine. So we'll go over port 80 um, and go to this URL and then it will be handed off to Action Cable without going into your full Rails application. So in order to set that up correctly, you, you'll save that file and make sure that you have that change. And then you'll also go into your config routes.rb file. And here at the top, you'll say mount action cable dot server and you'll point that to slash cable so this is really just mounting uh, the action cable server to that and setting that connection up and you can read more about this if you take a look at the uh, let's just look up rails action cable <clears throat> because it is in the rails directory where the documentation in the readme is so if you come to the readme here you'll be able to see a lot of examples about it, um, but you can either point to a like a subdomain where all of your action cable servers would be running. You can also point to a port, so you could handle that on a separate port. Or, um, let's see, let's just look this up. Or you can use the, uh, where'd it go? There, slash cable, um, and that, would allow you to use the route. And that's probably gonna be the easiest way. Now, one of these things that you're gonna notice is that if you're using like a domain like this or a port, you're going to probably have different ports or domains in development. So there's a helpful action cable meta tag that you can just print out into your, uh, like the head of your application layout. So you can print this out here uh, if you would like, and then you can set those action cable URLs in your config environments, development, and production.rb files. And then this will automatically just print out that. And then you would use create consumer without any arguments. So this would be empty, and that would automatically check for this meta tag and then set that up. So you would have this in your index.coffee in the channels. JavaScript file. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, the way we're going to do it is going to be using this URL, um, which will be relative to the current server, so it won't matter. You won't have to do any of this setup because it will always access that, um, which will be the simplest way. So um, the other thing that you're going to want to do is set your action cable uh, allowed request origins. Otherwise, you're going to get, when you open up in the browser, you're going to get a failure that the WebSocket uh, couldn't connect. And in your Rails logs, it will say it wasn't an allowed request origin. So in development, of course, this is localhost 3000. But because we are using a separate server here, um, we're actually going to need to set the allowed request origin. And I'll show you an example of the error that you'll get, how to see that in your logs, and then how to go fix that. So I won't put that in just yet, but we'll go ahead and take a look at that uh, briefly. And um, yeah, so if you, and if you search down here to the running the cable server section, you can either do it standalone where it runs with Puma on its own port, or you can mount the action cable server in your Rails URLs. So that basically runs alongside your Rails application and then gets separated out, um, which is an easier way of handling that. So we uh, now have both of those things set up. And if you run your Rails server, that's all you're going to need to do. But um, we've got Passenger installed. so. When we're not using this in development, so we won't be running Rails server to test this out. We'll actually be going and updating our uh, config for Nginx. So let's edit with Vim the etc Nginx sites enabled, and I have one site in here defined called default. And basically that says, let's just create our passenger application. We're gonna use the environment that we would like. So normally this will be a production. So let's just change that um, back. Let's change that back to development so that we don't have to compile our assets. If you're using Capistrano, you can have it already compile your assets and you won't have to worry about that. And then you set your root to the public directory, just like you would do with a normal passenger setup. Now the one piece that you're going to need to change for action cable is this location. So you know how we just said there was that slash cable section. We're going to be creating that here 
in our Nginx config. And that's just gonna tell Passenger that this is a WebSocket location. So we'll say location cable. And then we'll also type in the same uh, Passenger app group name and Passenger forks, force max concurrent request per process to zero, which is basically means unlimited. So that can have an unlimited number of concurrent requests, allowing you to uh, support a whole lot more WebSockets. So let's type that in. Uh, we'll move this down and say passenger app group name. And I'm just going to call this um, Ashton Cable Example WebSocket Passenger Force Max Concurrent Requests Per Process to Zero. And that's the only difference that you're going to need to do in order to use Passenger uh, with Action Cable. So there's about those three changes. And once you d have done that, you're going to need to sudo service nginx restart. And that will restart nginx. And you'll see an OK over there in the right when that has finished. Now that Nginx and Passenger are up and running and configured, if we type in the IP address of our server um, or the domain if you're doing this on a production server, uh, then you should get the Rails application, and we do. So clicking on this should be able to go into our channel, and we'll be able to open up the, um, the JavaScript console to see if our WebSockets are working. And here you can see that it's uh, checking for WebSocket on that IP address slash cable. So that's a slash cable that we set up on the JavaScript side. Um, but you're noticing that, well, there's warnings here and it's saying that it failed um, and it closed before the connection is established. Now, what is that? If you see this, chances are what you're going to get is that if you open up your log um, and take a look at that, you're gonna see that the request origin was not allowed there at the bottom. So um, I can't show you this with my mouse to highlight that line, but the second from the last line says request origin not allowed. And that is because with WebSockets, you actually need to say that, okay, this is an allowed um, domain to talk on those WebSockets. So that is what I mentioned earlier in the um, request origins. And really, you're just going to want to put this inside your uh, Rails app. So by default, this defaults to localhost 3000, of course. And then for development, uh, if you use an IP address that's not localhost 3000 or like your own little domain in development, you'll have to change that. Um, and we're just going to take this and we're going to go edit our application. So let's open up config environments development.rb. In your example, you should do this in production, but because we're using development here, we'll use that. And um, I've actually run into a bug, I believe, that when you use the exact um, line that they give you, it doesn't actually set this, at least in development. So when I did this, um, it actually didn't take, and all it would do is uh, set it to localhost 3000. So um, what you can do instead, uh, and that likely will get fixed. Um, and then what you can do instead is set config.actioncable.alloweDRequestOrigins and set your URLs there. Now this is probably going to be the one that I will recommend the most um, for that. And then uh, this, uh, because we're using the URLs and we said that in the uh, config, we can we can change this to keep it consistent to slash cable, but this isn't being used because we're not using that action cable uh, meta tag. So that you can change here, but we're um, gonna importantly set this allowed request origins to the HTTP protocol or HTTPS, and then the IP address or the domain that you're gonna be accessing this through. So once you have that set, if you need to test this out and make sure that that's working correctly, just open up your Rails console and say action cable.server.config. And at the very bottom, you'll see the allowed request origins is the last one. 
um, and that's set to the array that I set before. And if this doesn't take, you'll notice that that allowed request origins defaults to localhost 3000. So you'll probably want to check that until that is correctly set up. And then you can just simply touch restart.txt to restart uh, the Rails application with Passenger. And then refreshing this page should take a little bit longer this first time as it reloads everything. And then um, if you let this sit for a little bit, you'll, you should see that there is no more errors. But there is this time, so let's uh, do some debugging. So... Uh, Registered connection, actually, that seems to have worked. This first request did not, but it looks like it has retried. Um, so it did. It does look like it has worked. So what we can do is we can open up the uh, incognito version and then log in as a different user and go into the same channel. And we should see in this user that there are no WebSocket errors. And we'll leave that open so we can see that, just in case. And let me shrink this down. And send another uh, test. And so you can see that this automatically got posted and automatically showed up on the other window. Now, if you want to test this out even more, you can open up like Safari and Firefox and it, both of their private browsing modes. And then you can see that you will be able to access um, your server with all of those. All of them will have WebSocket connections and then everything will get real time updating, which is super duper cool. So there is likely lots of little bugs and things that will change. Um, like we ran into that one with the request origin. All of those things will probably get a lot more polished as the release candidates come out and any more betas, and then the final version, uh, which should happen in the next few weeks. So that's really all you have to do. The important piece here being that um, your ETC Nginx sites enabled default really just needs this location uh, chunk here for the slash cable part. And that about wraps it up for this episode. Deploying action cable is actually super duper easy if you're using Passenger. I expect there to be a lot more uh, improvements and fixes for Passenger. Um, once Rails 5 gets out of beta and starts to get into release candidates and the final versions, you'll probably see more updates. So keep an eye on those. Um, Rails 5 updates as well. Um, if, and if you deploy this to production um, and get something going, definitely include a link to your app in the comments below. I'd love to see those. And until then, uh, happy hacking.